So what do you do when you want a professional look on your uh, on the back of your board? You hire your seven-year-old to help you. <laughs> so we found some old paint in the in the basement, just some old white semi-gloss paint. We're gonna go ahead and throw this on here and probably look a little bit better than bare MDF. Try and brush it just one direction. There you go. Yeah, instead of going like this way and then this way, try and go just up like forward and back. Like pick a, pick a direction you wanna go and, and stick with it. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right, so my daughter got done painting that and to be honest, it kind of looks like a seven-year-old did it. So I went ahead and I figured at this point I might as well take some chances. Not that having a seven-year-old paint your, your board isn't a little bit of a chance, but I looked up online, you know, can you sand latex paint? And some websites actually said, never sand it. It'll just come off. So I thought, I think I've sanded it before. So I went and dug around and I found one of these little sanding blocks. This one's pretty clogged up, but I figured I'd give it a try just to try and knock down some of the brush strokes and some of the high spots and everything. And it seems to have worked fairly well. Not perfect, but at least it's not terrible either. So on top of having a seven-year-old do it, my wife goes, why didn't you use a roller? And I was like, well, I don't know. <laughs> so I went and dug around Found a little baby roller. I'm gonna go ahead and try that. Um, hopefully a second coat looks quite a bit better. I think it will. I think this paint might be like super old too. It's like really thick. It's hard to even coat the roller. Oops, it's like I've been drinking. Man, why didn't my daughter do it this quick? Jeez, I'm already almost done. The interweb said not to keep messing with it. So I'm gonna leave it at that, kind of knock the sides a little bit. And then we'll call it good. Okay, so number one lesson is do the sides first. Because they don't have to be as pretty as the top. And try not to drop your voice recorder. That costs $80. All right, I'm calling that good. Even if it leaves that texture on there, I'd be happy with that. So we will see what happens. Let that dry and then I'll start bolting electronics on it. Yeah. All right, so while that's drying, I'll, I do wanna mention that um, where I left off the other night, you saw that I had it kinda like all framed in and everything with wood. And I actually went as far as to wood glue that all together. And then as the wood glue is drying and everything, I kinda thought about it and started placing components in there that are loose, like my drivers and started looking at how wires are gonna run and I realized like my DB25 cord is supposed to go right through the side of it and all my power cords are gonna go through the side and I went, crap, none of that's gonna work if I've got, you know, all this wood here. So with it still wet, I was able to rip it off, kind of clean up the glue as best I could and I realized that I'm gonna be living with this flat piece for now. Um, there's probably better ways to engineer it so that I could do a wall on there and frame it in, but for now, that's what I'm gonna be using. So, the other way it wasn't well thought out, apparently, but, you know, move on with life. All right, folks, so, it's the next night. I let it dry, ta-da. It actually looks pretty good, I think. I mean, it's not perfect, but sanding it and uh, going over it with the roller really definitely helped. So tonight, I'm gonna start tearing this bad boy apart. I think I've said that like three times now on this video, but, I keep trying to like preserve as much wiring as I can to try and um, know how the next um, portion is gonna go back together and everything. 
And I think I'm to the point where I just need to start tearing into it. You know, I can basically start from scratch with the wiring. I kind of have an idea how it goes. I'm going to take a few snapshots here before I really dig in. But for the most part, you know, I, I need to just dig in. It's going to be a better product in the end if I do that. Um, with everything disconnected, I can kind of go through and arrange it on this board so that it's how I like it um, without all these wires and everything dangling everywhere. So that's definitely the next step. All right, so I've kind of been playing around with some configurations and everything. Now that I've got the board cut out and I know I've got enough space, I've just kind of been playing around with all the different shapes trying to maximize it. Because to be honest, it was way too much work with a pencil. It's way nicer when you've got all the pieces here that you can just kind of play with. So this is what I kind of came up for now. It might still change. Um, not quite sure if I love it yet, but I think we're getting there. There you go. So up at the very top, I've got my um, breakout board. And I wanted it to be close to my stepper since they're sending, or my stepper drivers since it's sending signals back and forth quite a bit. Um, below that power supply, I wanted that to be close to my drivers because that's what it's powering. And then as I work down, here we've got, this is the treadmill motor controller, um, a big electric choke. Um, hopefully we can get rid of that later. But for now it's there. So those two go hand in hand um, for the spindle. And then I've got my little kind of, I'm hoping this will be kind of like a prototyping area and I wanted to leave it big. Um, cause I'm not done with spindle control. I'm still playing with that. Um, the end result I'd like to see is some closed loop spindle control as well as some flood coolant. So I know I'm going to be needing some relays and that kind of thing to get that up and running later on down the road. Um, as well as I don't really like all these um, power cords. I've got to plug like five things in. So I'd like to maybe set up like a bus bar here where I've got 110 coming in and maybe a little circuit that breaks out five volts, 12 volts, whatever I need. And then um, get rid of a lot of this stuff, clean it up, add some fuses, add a circuit breaker, um, hopefully make it nice and safe. Um, all on the way to being able to just turn this thing on, go lights out, call it a day, come back do a tool change, that kind of thing. All right, folks, so next night, man, I've been taking this project slow. Normally I just rush this stuff through in a night or two, but I'm trying to make it nice, trying to make it, you know, efficient, nice looking, something that I can look at for a few months and not hate. Got my breakout board there. I call him Bob right there. And then I mounted all these, they're screwed down. And then I've got that first one there. That's gonna be my X axis. I'm just gonna go X, Y, Z. So I went ahead and plugged that in. Uh, I just plugged the stepper motor wires directly into it. I'll end up make, needing to extend those wires and make them longer. But just to make sure that everything's working um, along with my power supply. So all that's plugged in, working. So I guess you could say that I have one axis CNC going on. So the next step I want to do before I get too far into it is I'm going to take that x-axis stepper off my machine and replace it with this other, the new stepper 
That way I can make sure that the motor is spinning in the right direction like it should. And if not, I can go ahead and change the wiring now. And then I'll have the right wiring for the next two. Um, another little hack, I guess you could call it, is for finding hole locations to drill. Because with MDF, you want to drill your holes. And these screws on here are what I'm using to mount my power supplies. And they're not even like a coarse thread. They actually thread into the case. And so what I do is, you can kind of actually see it on one of those screws there. I take a red Sharpie and I cover it with as much ink as I can. And then when I set it down on here, I just make sure that it's making contact on all four corners. And then when you take it up, there's um, little spots where the Sharpie had rubbed off. And I mean, it's still not perfect. You kind of got to just go in the middle of the smudge and um, hope for the best. But it seems to be working pretty good. Um, you know, if you drill your hole just slightly oversized, it, it works okay. So. So that's how I am getting my holes located. At this point, I'm just gonna keep on trucking, get the other power supply mounted, get the other two axes working, and get all the steppers hooked up on, like actually mounted onto the machine. All right, the saga continues. I have one stepper um, driver already hooked up, and it is, I mean, this isn't final wiring, of course, but it's wired up to this motor over here and the thing runs nice. I can't believe how smooth and how mainly how quiet these steppers run compared to the other ones. I can actually hear everything that's wrong with my mill <laughs> inside of these inside of these ways and everything. You can hear every bearing it seems like when I was just jogging it back and forth. So so far I am super happy with these steppers. Um, I've still got to run my actual wires and everything and I also while I got the first one hooked up I went ahead and ran the step and direction signals, the grounds, the power, everything is run to all three. So all I need to do is plug in the other two stepper motors. So at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and take off these other two, the Y and the Z, the old motors. And then I'll go ahead and hook everything up, build some harnesses, and hopefully by the end of the night have my three axis mill back. The only thing I won't have is a spindle. And then, um, yeah, if everything goes well and I got that, then tomorrow night I'll get the spindle going and I'll be a happy camper. Looks like I'm lucky enough to get to modify my little enclosure here. So I got my old tin snips here. So, okay, plans are in the works to replace all this stuff anyway. That'll work for now. I'll clean it up when the stepper's out of the way. So I actually refused to do this job today without going to Harbor Freight and getting some of these nice little T-handle Allen keys because I am so tired of fighting these motors to get them on and off with just a regular Allen wrench. So the kit for an 18 piece standard and metric was like 17 bucks, 15 after the coupon. And I think it's already saved me $15 worth of time just on the first motor. Because <laughs> these things are a pain to get on and off normally. And if you're not all boxed up against a corner, they come out just like this, nice and easy. Ta-da. Another thing that's nice about love joys is you can just pull them apart. They separate instead of trying to get like a Allen key or something up in there to undo the love joy. You just pull it apart. And now you got room to work on it. All right. So on the uh, X axis, everything was already working. I decided to keep going and I got the you know, your normal four stepper wire motors wired in for the Y and the Z, but I don't have any feedback going to them. And I think it'll be a cool little experiment to see just how much it takes without any feedback to trigger that error because those drivers are not going to like that. They're going to think, hey, I'm not getting any feedback. 
So this is going to be x-axis. Now let's try y and see how far it goes. And we've got an error. So I heard one click <laughs> on the driver, or on the stepper motor, and then I've got a blinky light here that that's, that's a following error is what the light means. So I don't know if you could see any actual movement in the uh, Y axis is what I was showing you, but I really couldn't. I, I watched the Z come down and it is so small when that error clicks on that I think it's gonna be just fine how it is and that should keep me from destroying any parts, which I like. Another thing I'm gonna consider, because you can see on the left, or my other left, the two right side drivers, you got the red lights flashing, that's the following error. Now there's no way to reset that except for killing power on the driver. So right now my drivers are hardwired wired into those power supplies, so that means I gotta shut down all of my board there pretty much. Um, I could unplug, follow it with your eyes, that gray cable that goes down below my bench, and then plug it back in. That would kill power supplies and drivers. That's not very convenient, so I may in the future put a little um, switch either just on the power input, you know, even a light switch would work right there, or some type of a little, little 15 amp switch. Um, either that or I could put a switch on each driver, but that would kind of be overkill, I think. So I wanted to go ahead and get the um, pretty much the mill back together tonight, make this a two-part series and call it good. Um, I managed to get the um, um, steppers, all three axes are moving now. So you can see my gigantic bundle of cords now because each stepper has not only four wires, but now it has 10. It's got four wires that drive the stepper and then it's got six that are for the encoder. So that's a pretty big little ponytail I got there. And so hopefully once I get this job done and I kind of get a feel for this and, and I make sure the wiring's how I like it, I'll go ahead and um, put loom on that and clean everything up. Um, but yeah, everything's hooked up, ready to go. This thing, I gotta say, these steppers are super quiet. Like you can kind of hear, it's like, it seems like it's a little bit more whine than I remember when I'm not doing anything with it. But when I go to run it, I almost feel bad because I hear so much more stuff in my mill that I never heard before, especially the x-axis. The x-axis sounds nasty right now. I'm not sure if you can hear that, but. And then the Z sounds really good. It doesn't sound so like high pitched and whiny like it used to. It sounds like a CNC machine now. And then that's some bearing chatter at the top there. But like, it sounds like it should, like it sounds really good. And then Y is the same boat. Now I will say I'm actually afraid to crash this because with closed loop, if I command it to go to the end, it's gonna keep trying to go to the end. <laughs> so that wouldn't be good. So I'm gonna stop there while I'm ahead. But yeah, next step I've got these cables hanging out. These are positive and negative directly going to my spindle motor. So I will go ahead and um, run these to the driver, the, the treadmill motor controller, and get all that stuff wired in. So that'll probably be next week's video. So sorry I couldn't get it all done this week. So I think that's about it for this week. I'm going to leave it at that. So I will see you next week.